you want to get in on the action anytime, anywhere, download WPT Texas Hold'em on your mobile device today. WPT Texas Hold'em. Sometimes the game's too good to leave behind. The very understated Mike Matisau. <laughs> Always fun to have him around a tournament. Well, you see how much fun everybody has at this event, including Mr. Matisau. Maybe he's applying for his next job. Man. He played this event, of course, got knocked out. Right. Apparently hit the bar and is having some fun with us. <laughs> but we're down to four players here right now. Look at this, Almira Skripchenko. We're going to push chips in. You have the local L.A. guy, George Folding. Dan Heimiller picks up two queens. What a hand for Heimiller. Former finalist at the WPT at Brigada, season eight. Race 200,000. And he's going to bump it with his queens. 320 to go. Davide from Belgium going away. Almira was the champion of the world at 16 and under. The European champion in chess. And now she's playing poker. She's been a four-time European chess champion. Be a French champion as well. And right now makes the good lay down. With the Queen Jack there, and Dan Heimiller is now the chip leader. Oh, it seemed close. Looked like you were thinking about it. I don't know. It's like... It's just... In the early levels of the WPT Invitational, most players opted for a $200 rebuy, knowing that new chips not only gave them renewed life on the felt, but that 100% of the proceeds went to a charity that helped folks gain a better life for themselves in the real world. Earlier tonight, Mark Laranger, president and CEO of the nonprofit organization Chrysalis, was presented with a $100,000 check donated on behalf of the WPT Commerce Casino and the players of the Invitational. Mark, we are are so happy to be able to contribute $100,000 to Chrysalis. Tell us how Chrysalis plans on putting this money to use. Well, Kimberly, Chrysalis is all about helping the homeless and those in poverty get back on the path to self-sufficiency mm -hmm. through jobs. We offer a hand up, not a hand out. So the $100,000 will allow us to be able to provide everything that will be necessary to remove barriers to employment so our clients can get back to work. Mm. Well, on behalf of the entire poker community, the WPT is so proud to be able to contribute to such a fabulous organization uh, such as Chrysalis and the work you do is unbelievable. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. We're honored to participate. Action does continue here at Commerce, so let's get back down to Mike and Vince. Well, it's so great that $100,000 was raised from this tournament for Chrysalis. It's wonderful to see charities benefiting from poker tournaments. Back to the table here, Davide from Belgium folding his hand. Nice. And now the chess champ, Almira Skripchenko with the ace nine of clubs. She's going to raise it up, makes it 120,000 to go. All right, now George Recknitzer on auto muck, folds his hand. 300,000 total. But Dan Heimiller with pair of eights, a nice mid pair, going to raise. That's the only player that can break her at the table. And when you get raised by somebody that's got more chips than you and you're looking down at an ace nine, it just doesn't look that big anymore. She's going to throw it away. So Heimiller picking up the pot with a nice re-raise. Yep, Dan Heimiller extends his chip lead. Four players remain going after the WPT Invitational title. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. We want to welcome you to the WPT Invitational. This event brings the top poker players from around the world to play with the celebrities in Hollywood. Oh, I don't really play. I was very excited to come to the WPT Invitational because you get a chance to play against all the celebrity poker players. I actually had a spam diary at my table. Barry Greenstein, I had Liv Bory, one of them is Rocky Brothers. People love to play at Converse Casino because it is the best place to play in LA and all over the world. Welcome back to the WPT Season 9, brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where four players remain. Well, the lady that was speaking there is Denara Katsieva. She finished sixth in this event after she took a bad beat, but certainly got through a lot of tough players to make it to this final table. Back to the felt, a couple folds around to High Miller. Looks down at a queen deuce of clubs. 
Well, he's in the small blind. He's going to raise it up here. Makes it 130,000 to go. And right behind him, Davide Katai. I go in. Who hasn't played a pot yet at this final table, moving all in with ace nine, right over the top of Dan Highmiller. Davide playing tight so far. He's a World Series bracelet winner. You don't think I would. You know, raised with a good hand. And now he's aggressive. Push it in. High Miller out. Now, Beth, I've seen monogram cuffs before. I've never seen a monogram sleeve before. He's got the hooded sweatshirt with his name on the sleeve. Well, the hooded sweatshirt became famous when Phil Locke won this exact tournament years ago. Davide, the poker pro out of Anvers, Belgium. Nicely done. I went six months in L.A. to learn English. At this time, I didn't know anything about poker. I saw on television the World Poker 2 uh, show when uh, Derek Bronson beats uh, Lee Watkinson in Heads Up. Folks, that was a performance of the ages right there by Doyle Brunson. And uh, I said to myself, one day I would like to be there. And now, eight years later, I'm here in the final table. So there you go. Doyle Brunson creates another monster, and that is Davide. We're coming back as four players remain at the WPT Invitation. I'm Michelle Banzer. We are the Royal Flush Girls, and you're watching the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the WPT Invitational. Four players remain going after this title here tonight. There you see Dan Heimiller well out in front with over two million in chips. This is Dan's second WPT final table. He's looking for his first WPT title. Yeah, what a player. Used to be a cab driver in Vegas. Now he's playing in the big time. This time, the pair of sevens going to raise with it. Makes it 120,000 to go. Now right behind him, Dominique Katai looks down at ace queen. Big hand. He's a World Series bracelet winner. I go in. He's going to push with this. All in. Amira goes away. George out. So little to lose. So little to lose. He's got over twice as many chips. Um, I just can't see him laying this hand down here. I guess I have to call. I call. And he's going to call it. Exactly right. You might not like it, but you have to call it. You got to hope he's got the overcard where you're in a race situation. If Dam Highmiller wins this race, he'll be the monster chip leader with three players left. If Davide wins it, he'll be the chip leader. Hello. Hello. Yeah, there's Davide's friends rooting him on ringside. Davide love to get lucky here and double up. Here comes the flop. Well, an ace right on the flop. Davide is taking the lead with two aces. How do you like that? Oh, <laughs> nice hit for the Belgian. A couple more cards to come. Now the king comes off on the turn. So High Miller must catch a seven on the river to win this pot. Just a two outer. Can he do it? No, a queen of diamonds on the river. High Miller sits back down. So just that quick, High Miller loses half his stack, and Davide is now the chip leader with four players left. To the delight of his friends, Davide from Belgium making it happen there. We've reached the halfway point in our coverage of the WPT Invitational. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on the play we've seen thus far? Well, Kimberly, what's intriguing to me is the high blind and ante structure right now. In other words, very high blinds in proportion to stack size. Davide now has the chip lead thanks to that last hand with Dan Heimiller, which should help get him to the heads up. But these players are going to be forced to become even more aggressive. Definitely, Almira and Dan have shown that they can build momentum, as Almira did early in this match when she got lucky against Denara, and Dan's run started after he knocked out Damon. If they continue this streak, I think we could see either one of those players go heads up against Davide for the title. And Vince, what do you make of our remaining players? Kimberly, I'm very impressed by Dan Highmiller. Now, if you've noticed, he has been involved in well over 75% of the hands we have seen tonight. Also, just keep an eye on George Rechnitzer, the local pro. You know what? I'm worried about him. There's a search party out for him. Hasn't played a hand, but one quick double up by George, and we could have a real fight on our hands, believe me. Well, gentlemen, we shall see. But the one thing we do know is that only one of these four players will walk out of Commerce Casino as the next WPT champion. Please join us next time for WPT's continuing coverage of the WPT Invitational brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flash Girls, and the whole WPT team. I'm Kimberly Lansing saying thanks for watching. Good night.